Greetings, this is Tyra Olafemi, your goddess guru, here to share a word of inspiration to assist you on your path to self-realization and self-mastery. I have been listening to the um, videos that I made with the um, Divination New Year's reading for 2014, and I need to add just a little more to the reading. So, first of all, structure is needed for 2014. Whenever Sekert speaks, um, we have to look at a structure of a thing. We have to look at um, just how something is put together. You know, the structure. Uh, again, it's all about the skeletal system, our structure. And oftentimes when you think about the structure, you, you, you want it to be well put together or else it's not going to work. Um, or whatever that thing, the structure, if the structure is not rock solid, then I mean, just whatever it is, it could be a building, it could be an organization. If it is not well put together, if the structure is not rock solid, it is not going to be, you know, functionally, it will not be rock solid. And so whenever Secret speaks, structure is being called for. Have structure in your life. And with Secret speaking in the negative, it is saying that um, more than likely there will be a lack of structure. So again, Secret says you need to intuit a plan. And don't come up with any schemes. You need to listen to the wisdom within you. The wisdom of the universe leads, guides, and directs us. And so we have to listen to the wisdom of the universe. And uh, it will give us a plan. And the, the wisdom is in you. Just know that. It's not somewhere out there. The wisdom of the universe is within each of us. We have been given everything we need to make it in this life but a lot of times most of us don't do anything we don't we don't sometimes we don't even know that all that we need is you know already within us um and so we were given the wisdom access to the wisdom i mean honestly i don't need to know all the wisdom every second every moment of the day because it's sort of like Okay, I just want to brush my teeth right now. <laughs> I don't need the wisdom to do that. <laughs> um, but I would like the wisdom ever presently working in my body to keep my body functioning. Um, so we may not have all the wisdom, but we do have access to it. That's where people get it messed up and thinking they have to go someplace else. No, the wisdom of the universe, the wisdom of God of the divine, however you want to say it, of the goddess, it resides within you and you have access to it. So access the wisdom within you to get the plan. And in order to make the plan happen, guess what? We need to have some structure in our life. What does your day look like? Do you have structure to your day? That's something that a lot of people struggle with. We have the goal, but we don't know how to get there. We don't have enough um, discipline. We don't have enough um, structure in our lives. There's a systematic way of living. And that's one of the reasons I like studying older people. I like looking at cultures from of old because um, they, I think that they were a little more connected to that inner wisdom. So they just naturally listened and had a natural flow Maybe their flow was according to what the sun was doing or what the moon was doing. But there was definitely a structure, a natural flow. I even think about the structure of societies. The ancient cultures had a structure and this structure worked. And for a lot of us, we don't, we don't have that structure. And so we don't, we don't know our place. So we need to have structure. That's how we get things done. Your structure may flow differently from my structure. And guess what? Your structure in January may look one way, but in March, it may need to shift some. Structure should not be something that is um, so fixed that if a shift is needed, 
that we can't make that shift. So make the shift if you need it, but don't make up excuses for not sticking with your structure. Like, uh, I just don't feel like it today. That that's that that's no good. Okay. Um, okay. So moving on. Um, I was reminded as I looked at a quote on Facebook that uh, I need to talk about what procrastination is all about. And I have a theory. So this year is a year about us needing to be more um, more um, willing to tap the power within to stop acting like we're powerless. Okay, we have the power of the universe within us. We have access to it, so all you have to do is access it, okay? And then we have to know divine law in order to know how to do it. And I'm beginning to realize it's so easy. It's so mind-blowing when we think about how massive, I mean, it's infinite in nature, the wisdom, the presence, the um, power that is, you know, this, this universe that we're in, this beingness this consciousness that we're in but it's simple okay it's not nothing difficult stop making it hard okay so we have access to the power within us don't stop acting powerless i don't want to hear that anymore not from me not from you we're not powerless get stop it just stop all that but there are indicators when we are operating from a position of not being um powerful. So with Sekir, Sekir says there will be delays. There will be delays. Now, a lot of times when people are, you know, operating according to Sekir energy, and when this energy speaks in the negative, you're going to find people that procrastinate. How many people out there are procrastinators? I mean, you just, I mean, you are most powerful waiting to the last minute to get that thing done. And you are hustling and shuffling your butt and you get all creative. I, I have a theory about people who procrastinate. I think people who procrastinate feel powerless. Because why would we wait to the last minute to do something when we could take our time and probably do a better job at it and not have all this stress? even though for some people it doesn't feel stressful. Okay, I come from the clan of procrastinators. So I can talk about anyone who's a procrastinator. I can talk about you, okay? So it is ridiculous for us to wait. You know for a fact that to a certain degree, you are a procrastinator because, well, some of it could be you're lazy, okay? This is a year where we need to, every year, forget this year, okay? Let's start today. It's still 2013 while I'm making this video. Let's, let's not wait until 2014 to focus on good character. I'm beginning to realize the power of character. Part of good character, as I see it, is I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do when I'm supposed to do it. That, I mean, that's just being responsible. Being responsible is good character. Um, and so waiting to the last minute, it's not responsible because anything can happen at the last minute. And, and then that thing doesn't get done. The next thing you know, you've created a, a bigger problem for yourself. I, I think about when I was in college, procrastinating, OMG. Now, I was not in college during this technologically advanced age. And so, uh, you know, we could have malfunctions, but you could always handwrite that stuff. I mean, it was like, okay, just as long as you had good handwriting. If you really got desperate, no one would question you handing in something handwritten, like a paper, because I was an English major. But, um, I mean, nowadays, at any given moment, that server may go down, boo. <laughs> and you don't have access to the last minute information you need. And then before you know it, paper's not turned in, F, and you're not graduating when you're supposed to. Same thing with people who are at work. Oh, it's the last minute report. We're sitting up here waiting. Why? You knew six months ago this report was due. Why would you wait until the last minute? Well, maybe because some of us are just downright lazy. We need to have a better work ethic. I don't know where you are. I'm in the United States of America. If you don't know my accent by now. And um, we're lazy. 
in this country. I look at this these economic problems that we've been having to a certain degree as a blessing because it's making us get up off our lazy butts and work more. Oh my God. We can't sit around and just be at leisure all the time. We have to actually get up and do some work so we can eat. Okay, just basic functioning for some people. Um, we need to teach our children the value of being responsible and working hard. However, part two, or answer number two, some of us don't feel powerful. We sit around in our powerlessness and we think on, oh, I, I do need to get that done. I, I'm thinking on getting started. I do need to get that done. Like I said, I'm the chief of procrastination, so I can talk about everybody. <laughs> Even me. I can talk about me. <laughs> just You think on that thing. Just like I said, second seasons, you're going to be thinking a lot. But baby, at some point, you need to get up and get that thing done. You want to get out of being a procrastinator? I'm going to teach you what you need to do. Get up and do it. If you don't know what to do, ask somebody. Do something. But don't sit around because you feel you can't. You, you won't if you don't. You won't if you don't. But if you at least get up and put forth some effort, you just may find out, oh, I can do this. That's how I started working my way out of feeling so powerless. I just started saying, you know what? I'm I can't just sit here. I've I got to get up and I've got to get up and do something. And and there's this thing called inertia. This physical principle which is really non-physical. I mean, it it's it, it rules and dictates our physical reality, but it stems from the spiritual, of course. So I look at it as inertia. Uh Everything is going to sort of um, tend or lean itself to having inertia, wanting to stay in one spot, stability. And so when you want, we have, let's say we have inertia A going on in our life. Let's say there's different types of inertia that we see manifested. Or maybe I have an inertia on this particular part of the continuum, inertia A. And I want to get to another place. Well, I've got to, I, can, I have to uh, apply some force. Let's talk physics. <laughs> I took two physics classes, so I know physics. <laughs> anyway, let's say we have to apply some force to move past this inertia. What's force? Doing something, getting your butt up and doing something. Yes, getting up and doing something. Using your power, even if we're just talking about the physical power. Moving the body, get up and move to a different spot in your life. Move toward the goal. Move toward the vision. Move toward getting done the thing that you know you need to get done. When you get up and you start moving, inertia A is not gonna be your inertia point anymore. You'll have a different inertia point when you're ready to move on. Because we do need stability. I mean, a, a constant change, you can't get away from change, but too much change, especially if it's not necessary, is not good. So we have to, um, you know, be okay with the fact that we're going to have inertia because inertia sort of helps to keep us to in a point where we can see, okay, this is where I am. I like it. Well, maybe I need to change something. But by the same token, we can't let our inertia keep us from moving forward, okay? So um, procrastination is a symptom of being feeling powerless uh, but being powerless is really a construct of the physical reality we construct our physical reality just like we construct a house or a car or let's say we're putting together something with lego pieces you construct it and powerlessness is a construct it's not the truth that's why i said this year you, if you don't know the truth you don't know enough of the truth you need to find out what the truth is and operate according to the truth, okay? So you're not powerless. This, that's the truth. Don't act that way. And guess what? You're going to start finding that you're not running late all the time. Running late is not okay. And I know some of us come from cultures of people who run. They have a different concept of time, okay? That is one thing. We have different concepts of time culturally. But running late, 
having someone wait they're sitting there waiting for you to get started they're sitting there waiting for you because they thought you're gonna be there too and you don't show up until 2 30 well see now they could have been doing something between 2 and 2 30. if y'all have an agreement uh round two really means 2 30. oh that's different but you constantly late no that's a that's a, a symptom of powerlessness okay because a one character trait uh, that I believe in, and I think everyone believes in this, is called respect. Okay, so there are times when it's okay to show up fashionably late, and then there are times when it's not okay because now you're not respecting someone else's time. So let us operate according to our power. Let us be responsible. Let us be hardworking, and let us get some stuff done and stop procrastinating procrastinating is not okay now i'm not gonna lie sometimes i realize there is a divine time and running late was meant to be and yeah you know, because i'm that type of person i am going to move what i feel my spirit tells me to move not according to someone else's clock all the time but that's in a special situation where it's it's a sensing, it's a knowing. If I tell my classes, I teach fitness classes and dance classes. If I tell them my class starts at 2 o'clock, Tyra's going to be there at 2. I feel horrible if I get there and I'm late setting up and I start at 2.01. I don't like that because now there's some people that are like, Oh, girl, thank you. I was running late. <laughs> And they're not going to be upset about me starting at 2 1. But there's some people that they want their hour of working out, start at 2, end at 3 because they have something else to do. Okay? So that right there, that's some, that I'm not running late in that particular. I'm going to be respectful of other people's time. Um, so there we have it. Oh, one other thing. I, oh, it just irked me that I did not say this about the trees when I talked about the cycles. And that is that what trees teach me about winter is they don't sit around and cry because their leaves got blown away. And now they just look like twiggy, twiggy, twiggy type trees. They're, they don't have any clothes on. All their beautiful leaves are gone. They stand proudly anyway, branches. That's all I see. It's just the branches. It's not a pretty sight until you see ice and snow. Uh, I just think that's so beautiful to see that in the um, on in, in the winter time when the trees don't have the leaves. It is so beautiful when you see the ice and the snow. Oh, it's just it's magnificent to see that. But the, they don't, they're not sitting up here crying when they lose something. I talked about how when you lose something. You know, people think it's horrible or people don't all the time appreciate cold, wintry conditions. And, you know, I think about the medical industry and how they are showing that when you freeze something, it helps save its life at times. I've heard of people being frozen, organs being frozen, stuff being frozen keeps it from dying. There is beauty in the winter. There is beauty in the cold i used to be a type of person and this is how life changes stuff okay how you can be one way today and another way another day i used to hate the winter i was born in alaska i'm not from alaska but i was born there left when i was eight months old and was raised in mississippi in the united states okay we get heat down in mississippi it's hot in mississippi i like heat okay i was born in the cold but i love heat I've never liked the cold for the most part. I just don't enjoy, I, I, you know, for the majority of my life, I've not enjoyed the cold. Cold. Well, 19 years ago, a little over 19 years ago, I became the daughter-in-law to Virginia Hargrow. And she would say, oh, Tara, I just love the cold. Oh, I just love the winter time. Look at those big old pretty flakes. Oh, it's just something about the cold. I just, oh, in the wintertime, I just like sitting by the window. Oh, it's just so cold and I just love it. Oh, the cold, the cold, the cold. And I would look at my mother-in-law and think, is she crazy? There's nothing good about the cold. <laughs> and 
here 19 years later, I now love, this is the first winter where I'm like, I totally love the cold weather. Never in my life did I believe this. But this is going to be the one time a year where I feel like my mother-in-law is here. When I see snow, I just get so happy because it makes me remember my mother-in-law and how much she loved the cold weather. So now the cold weather is very comforting to me. And yes, I turn my heat up. <laughs> I try not to turn it up too high because I want to be a respecter of energy issues. But I love when it's hot on the inside of the house. We had a fire the other day. We were at a cabin and we started a fire in the fireplace and it was so hot. We started peeling off our clothes, taking off our sweatshirts and our socks. It was so hot, but it was so cold outside. So the, the contrast, it, was just, it just felt so wonderful. And it just made me feel so comforted in my soul as I miss my mother-in-law. So the, the, there's such a wonderful, wonderful place for cold weather. And the winter season, the winter cycle. And when you're in a season of winter, here you go for relationships. Relationships go through the winter time where you're like distant. And you feel like, I just don't even care. You just sort of have nice pleasantries. Hello, how are you? Not a lot of small talk. Not a lot of, lot of that, that, that spring-like affection, right? And a lot of divorces, I believe, happen when people are in the season of winter. But no one talks about, hey, baby, you're going to go through a season where it's a little chilly in your relationship. And it doesn't necessarily feel good. And you're distant. But this is the beauty of the winter time in your relationship. You get to work on you. Because guess what? The majority of your relationship issues have to do with you and not your partner. Okay, so when you are in a love relationship and you are in the season of winter, don't go get a divorce. Now, you know, if there's physical violence, oh, bye bye. <laughs> don't say in that um, verbal abuse. Bye. I'm out. Okay. If there is infidelity where this person really is just going to be sleeping around with other folks, having relationships with other people, I say bye. If that's not your flow, some people don't care. But if you care, if you're in a relationship where you have agreed we're going to be monogamous and your significant other is uh, not upholding that and you're not in agreement with it, bye. I think there's reasons to say goodbye. That's not winter. That's dysfunction. Let's get it clear. Let's get that cleared up. But if you are in a in your relationship now you don't want to stay in winter too long okay i know people that have been in winter for like 20 years okay baby that's dysfunction that's not winter that's dysfunction you should see yourself cycling through all the seasons okay and um so when you get in the winter season don't just say oh, i have to go bye bye no what you say is okay this is a time where we're not vibing each other for whatever reason, I can't quite figure it out, or maybe I do have it figured out, then don't use that as a time to sit and think about all the stuff that's wrong with your significant other, your spouse, whoever. Oh, this person, this, and this is what's wrong with them. No, look at yourself and improve yourself. Sometimes we're boring partners. I mean, we're just boring. There's nothing interesting about us. We're not doing anything interesting. So maybe I need to go and get interested in something and that will naturally bring out a, a vibrancy that will turn on my partner in my case is my husband and so I just encourage you to use the winter season of your relationships let's say it's not with a significant other but it's with um, a child or a family member or a friend there's going to be seasons of winter and you use that as a time to fix you and it also gives you a chance to take a step back and look at the friendship the relationship to see what you need to do to be better in that relationship it's always about you us the individual 
And when we can see that the other person really does have something going on that's, you know, a, that's a problem for them, we don't have to take ownership of it. We also don't have to point our fingers at them. We can acknowledge it and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You make a decision about how you are going to operate in your relationship with that person. And that's all you need to do. I mean, it's just not difficult, but we make it difficult because a lot of us are control freaks. And to me, being controlling is a sign of powerlessness. Stop trying to control everything and everybody because you don't feel like you have any control in your life. You feel like you have to control everybody. Okay? No. A lot of us need to learn how to just chill out, figure out where we stand, and then operate from there and don't let anyone move us. Once we've decided this is where I stand, don't let anyone move us. When it's time for us to move, we'll move because that's what our inner guide is telling us to do. All right? So there you have it. I'll end now. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. I do um, readings around the year. If you are interested in a reading, I do a New Year's reading. Um, you can just look at my website and um, follow the instructions there. I would love to divine on your behalf and share what the oracle has for you, even though guess what? It's in you. All I'll do is tell you what you probably already know, but it'll be confirmation. And maybe I can give you some tips and pointers to help you along your way. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Happy 2014. I want to hear from you. I want to know things are working for your highest and greatest good. All right. Peace and love.